good morning students today we will continue with the topic that we had introduced in our previous class lesson 1 in chemistry matter in our surroundings in the previous class we had started about the different characteristics of matter i told you that matter is made up of very tiny particles there may be some space between the particles the particles are continuously moving and the particles attract each other with a certain force now it is so observed that different forms of matter exist in nature why is it so because materials show some amount of variation as far as these properties are concerned like all forms of matter are composed of very small particles but the amount of space existing between the particles the force with which they attract each other and the extent to which they can move about their position this may vary so depending upon the variation in the characteristics shown by these materials we can classify matter into different groups and today we will be focusing primarily on this particular topic states of matter matter exists in five different states solid liquid gas plasma and bos einstein condensate out of these five states of matter in your syllabus we have to study only about solids liquids and gases as far as the other two states are concerned i will give you an introduction to plasma and bos einstein condensate but no questions are going to be asked in your examination from these two topics so we'll be focusing more on the properties of solids liquids and gases so let's study one by one about the different states of matter beginning with solids solids collect a couple of articles present around you say a pencil a pen a book a needle and a piece of wooden stick now suppose i ask you one question can you figure out any similarity between these objects all these objects have a fixed shape distinct boundaries and a fixed volume if you draw the outline of these objects in your notebook you will find that they have got distinct boundaries now if you are asked to change the shape and size of these objects what needs to be done you have to apply some force in fact a lot of effort will be required in order to bring about a change in the dimensions of these objects is it easy to compress them like by applying pressure can you change the shape or size of these objects no compressing these objects is so difficult now if you are placing your pen book pencil and that wooden stick close to one another would they intermix with each other absolutely not they are not even diffusing with each other so all these observations help us to conclude that solids have a definite shape fixed volume less or zero compressibility not at all diffusible and requires a lot of force so as to change their dimensions now the question arises why is it so just see the particle arrangement in solids how closely they are packed there is very little space between the particles inside solids that's the reason why the solids have got a fixed shape distinct boundary and fixed volume the particles are so tightly packed due to a large amount of force of attraction existing between them so it is so difficult to compress them and that's the reason why they don't even mix with each other so this is the particle arrangement of solids now let us understand all the properties of solids quickly 
Solids have definite shape and fixed volume. The space between the particle is minimum. The force of attraction between the particles is maximum. The movement of the particles is hence minimum. They are least compressible. Their rate of diffusion is least. Now we will study about the next state of matter that is liquid. Liquids. You can see that liquids show a very peculiar property of moving from one place to another that is flowing. If some water spills on the floor, does it stay in that place? Obviously not. You can see this in this picture that it is sliding down the surface. So flowing from one place to another is given the name of fluidity. Hence, liquids are placed in the category of fluids. Now, this is not the only property shown by liquids. We can understand the different properties of liquids by collecting a couple of liquids that are commonly available in our homes. Say, water, cooking oil, milk, juice and cold drinks. You can take containers of different shapes and sizes and pour these liquids one by one in different containers. What will you observe? You will see that the liquid acquires the shape of these containers. This leads us to the conclusion that liquids do not have a fixed shape. Hence, they are quite different in this regard with solids. But with the help of a measuring cylinder, if you put a mark in all these containers, say a 50 milliliter mark or a 100 milliliter mark and pour these liquids, you will find that the quantity, the amount of liquid always remains the same. This means even if the shape changes, the amount or quantity or rather the space occupied by the liquid in these containers remains the same. This means liquids have a fixed or definite volume. Now why is it so that liquids do not have a definite shape? For this, we have to consider the particle arrangement in liquids. In solids, the space between the particles is extremely small and the particles have a large force of attraction between them. So, they are not in a position to move. But this is not the situation with the liquids. There is some space between the particles and the particles are able to move about their position. This is the reason why liquids do not have a fixed shape. So then quickly we can understand what are the properties shown by this particular state of matter. Liquids have no definite shape but have fixed volume. Liquids take the shape of the container. The space between the particles is intermediate. The force of attraction between the particles is intermediate. The movement of the particles is also intermediate. They are less compressible. Their rate of diffusion is more than solids. If you are having two different liquids, say ink and water, they can mix with each other easily. This is also a difference between the property shown by solids and liquids. Solids do not diffuse with each other, but liquids can diffuse. Okay, so now we will study about gases. The third state of matter, gas. We know that we use the gaseous phase of matter as a fuel in our homes. Now just by observing that particular fuel, the cooking gas, liquefied petroleum gas, can we understand the properties shown by it? Or 
air that is present all around us. Can we use these examples to understand the properties shown by the gaseous phase of matter? Absolutely. We understand that air neither has a fixed shape nor it acquires a definite space. Like for example, if you fill in some air inside a balloon and then gradually release that air inside a room, will that air be confined within the same space as it was inside the balloon? Absolutely not. It will spread out evenly inside the entire room. If suppose we burn an incense stick, you can see the smoke coming out of it. And you can also observe how that smoke starts spreading out inside the entire home. Like even if you are sitting in another room, you can still get the fragrance coming out of that incense stick. How is it possible? Because that smoke, obviously what is in the gaseous state, it starts moving out. It starts spreading out. So it doesn't have a fixed shape and it doesn't have a fixed volume. Now why is it so? Now in the gaseous phase of matter, the particles are always in the state of random motion. There is a lot of space between the particles and the force of attraction is negligible. That's the reason why gases can spread out in all possible direction. So this is a significant difference between this phase and solids and liquids. The particles have a lot of space between them, the force of attraction is negligible and they are always in a state of random motion. So they can diffuse easily and they can be compressed. Since there is a lot of space between the particles, so obviously by applying pressure, you can confine these particles in a smaller region. This particular property is utilized in making compressed natural gas, CNG, which is being used as a cleaner fuel nowadays in almost all big cities. So let us now study about the properties of this phase of matter. Gases have no definite shape or fixed volume. Gases occupy the whole space of the container. The space between the particles is maximum. The force of attraction between the particles is minimum. So obviously the movement of the particles will be maximum. They are most compressible and their rate of diffusion is more than solids and liquids. Now after studying the properties of solids, liquids and gases, I think now you are in a position to compare what is the difference shown by these three different states of matter. Now, As I told you that we will be studying about the properties shown by solids, liquids and gases in a bit more detail but that doesn't stop us from introducing the fourth and fifth state of matter. We will have a brief introduction regarding these two states. So let's begin with the fourth state of matter. The fourth state of matter, plasma, was first described by chemist Irving Langmuir in the 1920s. It consists of a gas of ions, atoms which have some of their orbital electrons removed and free electrons. It can also be artificially generated by heating a neutral gas or subjecting it to a strong electromagnetic field to the point where an ionized gaseous substance becomes increasingly electrically conductive. The resulting charged ions and electrons become influenced by long-range electromagnetic fields making the plasma dynamics more sensitive to these fields than a neutral gas. Now do you know where plasmas are found? Plasmas are found in plasma displays including TV screens. They are found inside fluorescent lamps, 
rocket exhaust and ion thrusters inside a corona discharge ozone generator fusion energy research electric arc in an arc lamp plasma ball as you were seeing in the previous picture they are also found in terrestri as terrestrial plasmas like in the lightning and then in space and astrophysical plasma group in the stars the solar wind and the interstellar medium now very quickly then we will study about the fifth phase of matter the fifth phase is the bose einstein condensate it is typically formed when a gas of bosons at low densities is cooled to temperatures very close to absolute zero that is minus 273.15 degree celsius under such conditions a large fraction of bosons occupy the lowest quantum state at which point microscopic quantum phenomena particularly wave function interference become apparent microscopically now this may sound a bit difficult because this particular concept is not supposed to be studied at this level but i just wanted to introduce the fifth state in simple terms you should understand that we are able to create bose einstein condensate by cooling a gas of extremely low density what should be the density about 1 by 1 lakh times this means 10 to the power minus 5 times the density of normal air to ultra low temperatures now you might be wondering why this particular state of matter is named like this because this state was first predicted in 1924 1925 by sir albert einstein following a paper written by acharya satyendra nath bose so that's why in honor of, of the name of these two great scientists this particular state of matter is called bose einstein condensate now what is the use of bose einstein condensate where is it found now two examples of materials containing bose einstein condensates are superconductors and superfluids superconductors conduct electricity with virtually zero electrical resistance once a current is started it flows indefinitely the liquid in a superfluid also flows forever now the proposed areas of applications of bose einstein condensate are quantum information processing concept of quantum computer precision measurement by development of most sensitive detectors using bose einstein condensate apart from this development of optical lattices which could be easily modifiable by varying the interplanar spacing okay so this much will be enough to know for the time being about this fifth state of matter i will end today's class at this point we will discuss the remaining topics in our next session thank you